Hey guys, this is James with Rogue Duelist Trade. Thanks for coming to the channel. And guys, on this channel, we talk about upcoming Yu-Gi-Oh product and whether or not you should invest your money in order to profit. Today, we have an exciting discussion. We're gonna go through a risk analysis for investing in the Sacred Beast Structure Deck. Now, if you guys didn't know, Konami several months ago created a poll and asked duelists what structure deck would they want them to create to provide support for an archetype. And Sacred Beast was one of those options and it was actually number two from getting selected. Number one was actually Shadal's. Shadal's got their structure deck in February, at least in the TCG, but it was announced about three or four months ago that we were also going to be getting the Sacred Beast structure deck. I believe it was just 1% away in votes for matching Shadal. Hey guys, before we jump into the video, as always, if you like content like this, like this video. Hit that thumbs up button below this this video. Guys, it really helps me when I know what type of content you enjoy, what type of content you don't enjoy. And guys, if you like content like this about investing in Yu-Gi-Oh product, subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell. That way, every time I post a new video, you will be the first to see it. And guys, share this video with your friends or whomever might be interested in this type of content. And also, Go ahead and follow me on Instagram, follow me on Facebook, and if you guys wanna join my Facebook group on investing in Yu-Gi-Oh product, all the links for that is down in the description below for Instagram, Facebook, and the Facebook group on Yu-Gi-Oh Investments. All right, guys, we're about to jump into the risk analysis for the Sacred Beast Structure Deck. I just wanna say real quick that everything that I go over in this video is purely for your consideration. I am not trying to direct you guys one way or the other. Again, if something scores high or low in this risk model, it only means that if there's more risk, in some cases there could be more reward, but if there's truly less risk, it only means that we should be able to see our return fairly easy on that product. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and jump in. All right, guys, Sacred Beast Structure Deck. I think this one's really exciting. I personally enjoyed the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX anime. I'm actually re-watching that series right now in Japanese. I'm actually at about the point where the Sacred Beasts show up. I think I'm about 47 episodes in. So this is a very exciting product to cover, and obviously there's a lot of people that are excited about this because they love the anime as well. So as a really quick high level, it's a 46 card structure deck. There's gonna be five ultra rares, three super rares, 38 commons, and two tokens. Now 37 cards are going to be reprints and nine cards are gonna be brand new. The OCG already got their Sacred Beast structure deck. So we already know all the prints that came out, at least in the OCG. But I did look at the Shadal structure deck and Mechanized Madness, which are two structure decks that have both come out already this year in the past couple months. And all the cards that were in the OCG that came into the TCG were nearly like for like. The only card that was different was in the Shadal structure deck. The OCG had one Harpy Feather Duster included in their structure deck, and that's because Harpy Feather Duster is at one in the OCG. And when it came into the TCG, they swapped out Harpy's Feather Duster for Twin Twisters. But other than that, all the cards in Mechanized Madness and Shadal structure deck were exactly the same. So I would assume all the cards that they got in the OCG are the cards that we are going to see in the TCG. So the first metric we're gonna go through for the analysis is current card support buyouts and value. And guys, if you don't know what these metrics mean, go down in the description below. I provide a definition on each of these metrics that we're about to go through. So first on the list is Uriah, and I'm looking at the ultra rare version from Dark Revelation Volume 4. I'm looking at this one in particular because this one has actually gotten bought out. A moderately played for $45, and then we have light play for $68. And then we have our first near mint hitting at about $100. And you can see in the past six months, it had a 13% increase. And then at about the time that the structure deck was announced, we have a 21% increase three months ago, 30% 30 days ago, another 30% three weeks ago, one week ago, 34% the last three days. A lot of people are focusing on this print and they're buying it out. And I'm just using this one as an example. And I would say it's fairly similar across the other prints as well, but I wanted to focus on this one because it's currently bought out. Next is actually one of the higher rarities for Raviel. And Raviel, the secret rare from the Collectible Tins 2016 Wave 1, six months ago had seen a 200% increase nearly. And then three months ago had almost a 231% increase. Now that's at about the time that the structure deck was announced in OCG. So you could imagine that people were probably getting very excited and started buying it out like crazy. And then we have about a 90% increase 30 days ago and almost 200% three weeks ago. 
Now, I think a lot of people are honing in on the secret rare because it's one of the highest rarities for Raviel. So the two up here, they say near mint, but they're actually heavy played. I actually investigated into that. And you can see even over here, it's even moderately played, even though it says near mint. So near mints are actually going for about $12, $20 right now for Raviel. And I could imagine that he could continue to go up, but because it's still relatively low considering, it might be a card to consider investing in if you think it might still continue going up. Next out of the same set is Haman coming out of the Collectible Tins 2006 Wave 2. Now I wanted to show him, even though he's been seeing a decrease over the past few weeks. So he had nearly a 200% increase three months ago and nearly 300, but he has been seeing some drops in the past few weeks and has picked up in the past few days. Again, some of the ones that say near mint aren't truly near mint. The near mint started at about $20. And you can see it's actually bought out because once it gets to that 202, that actually ends it for all listings on eBay and TCG Player. And you can see there actually aren't any listings on TCG Player, at least according to yugiohprices.com. Now guys, real quick, just as in every video that I've been trying to do as a side note on singles that you might want to invest now that we know say Sacred Beast is going to be coming in the next couple months. So these first two cards, Fallen Paradise and Dark Summoning Beast, are actually essential into the deck, especially if you want to play the deck at its fullest potential. Fallen Paradise is a field spell, and it basically makes your Sacred Beast to where they cannot be targeted or destroyed by effects. And then in addition to that, once per turn, as long as you have a Sacred Beast on your field, you can draw two cards. So this card's essential into the deck. So Dark Summoning Beast is definitely one of the best cards into the deck because you can just put them onto the field, tribute him, and you can get a sacred beast out from your hand or deck to the field. And you can also banish him from your graveyard to pull a sacred beast from your deck to your hand. Now, the reason why I'm calling these out, now these two are going to be reprinted into the structure deck, but I don't know if they're going to be commons or if they're gonna be one of the ultra rares or super rares. Now, if they do get reprinted as a super rare or a common, people always want highest rarity and they're going to go after these ultra rares. So I would say these are two great examples of something to potentially invest in. And also from what I've seen, these two cards have gone down in price over the past few months. So guys, again, I think this is something to consider. And also I have the three sacred beasts on the side. I would just say highest rarity, secret rare, or the original prints, if you guys can find them for a good price, I would say they're safe investments. They can only go up from here. So overall, looking at the three sacred beasts as examples for cards that are being bought out, I would say that it's high. I think there's a lot of excitement around it. I think seeing that a lot of the sacred beasts have been bought out it can indicate that a lot of people are gonna be wanting to play this deck, even though it may be a more casual deck. So the next metric is consumer hype on social media. Now, this is just us taking an outside observation and seeing what people are saying on social media, such as YouTube. Now I'm looking at four different sources. This is the comment section of Cyber Knight's channel when he opened the OCG Sacred Beast structure deck. One of the themes I am seeing in all of these YouTube videos in the comment section are people saying, yeah, I know it's not that competitive, but I wanna play the deck anyways. You'll see that fairly consistently across the board. So let's go ahead and look at House of Champ. So you can see here, let me have this. I don't know, the support looks really solid. Now this is from Mega Capital G from when he posted about this product. This person said, make the God cards great again, about time, they're so outdated, they needed to be relevant. How fitting the runner up from the structure deck poll is getting a structure deck, good for you, sacred beast. One of the few times an internet poll did something positive. Look here at M. Cole 40 when he posted about the sacred beast. This person said, 1010 hype, take my money. They will never see play, but I will have them. So guys, with that in mind, even though this is not the most competitive deck, it, it is, it's probably gonna be a deck that's very fun to play. And because there's a huge backing behind it for people who actually love the anime, I'm gonna go ahead and call this as a five. Okay, so multiple chase cards. This one's a little funny because if you guys have seen some of my other risk analysis videos, those are usually the cards that are extremely meta relevant, but also are very generic and can go into any deck. Now for this, because a lot of people are very excited to play Sacred Beast, I would say the multiple chase cards are gonna be some of the cards that are coming out that are new support that makes the strategy more viable. Those are the cards that people are gonna care for. They may just go buy the structure decks and just put all the other cards aside in bulk and only keep what they want, which is only gonna be a handful of cards really. So starting here, we got Chaos Summoning Beast and Dark Beckoning Beast. So Chaos Summoning Beast, essentially you contribute him and then you can special summon one of the sacred beasts from your hand 
or you can banish him from your hand and add a fallen paradise from your deck to your hand. Okay, so for Dark Beckoning Beast, when he's normal summon, you can add a Sacred Beast card from your deck to your hand. And then in addition to that, you can special summon another zero attack fiend monster from your hand to the field. So it helps you swarm out more monsters. So the whole point of this deck is to swarm out your Sacred Beast. You wanna be able to get as many of them out on the field as possible. Some card effects that you'll see me go through actually depend on how many Sacred Beasts you have on the field. Two of the next cards, I would probably say the best card coming out of the Sacred Beast structure deck, at least in terms of support, is the Seven Spirit Gates Unleashed. So this card, as a once per turn, because it's a continuous spell, you can pull any card that contains any of the Sacred Beast names in its text. So that's basically all of the support cards in the deck. It can pull any card that supports Sacred Beasts from your deck to your hand. And in addition to that, you can discard one card and then special summon from your graveyard a zero attack fiend monster. And then also once per turn, you can pull a continuous spell in your graveyard and bring it to your hand. This card is nuts for the archetype. It does a lot and it basically helps, and it basically helps you get momentum going for the strategy. Now, Sacred Beast Awakening, I did look at a lot of different builds so far for Sacred Beast. And for some reason, I'm not really seeing this played. And I feel like this is actually a very good going for strategy by having this trap card in the deck. Once per turn, if you have a level 10 monster on the field, Sacred Beast, you can add a continuous spell from your graveyard to your hand. And also it can gain a variety of effects depending on how many Sacred Beasts you have on the field. So if you have one, each time you normal summon or special summon a monster, you gain life points equal to that monster's attack, which isn't bad. But one of the better ones is if if you have two or more Sacred Beast monsters, you can negate all monster effects activated on your opponent's field. So it's basically like a one-sided Mystic Mine, except only for cards on your opponent's field. But that's a really good effect because it's a blanket effect. If you go to your opponent's turn and they don't have a way to out that, then you've already started out the game really strong. And then also is the third effect, any monster sent to the graveyard is banished instead. So that is both sides, but that also is very good for a lot of strategies in the meta today as well. And lastly, we have Cerulean Skyfire and Raviel, Lord of Phantasm, Shimmering Scraper. So probably the best thing about Cerulean Skyfire, that while it's on the field once per turn, you can negate an effect or spell and trap that's activated by your opponent by putting your Haman in defense position from attack position. Raviel, Lord of Phantasm, Shimmering Scraper. I'm actually surprised that I don't really see this in a lot of builds right now. And to me, I'm a hero player and it reminds me a lot of like an Honest Neos. So you could drop it on your Raviel and he gains double attack, but not just that, he can attack all of your opponent's monsters. So he's an 8,000 beat stick that can attack all of your opponent's monsters. Now think about using that in addition to something like Sacred Beast Awakening. If they don't have any spells and traps to respond, that would essentially end the game. Now overall, again, this deck isn't extremely meta relevant, but it is extremely casual relevant and there's a lot of people that wanna play it out of nostalgia. So I would say the new support coming out of the structure deck is essential if you want to try playing Sacred Beast. So I'm going to say that it's high and call it a four. Next is meta relevant now. And if you guys have heard me say, it just isn't meta relevant considering a lot of the other strategies right now in the meta. So this would be considered a two. It's definitely considered low. Next is product value versus cost. So it's 999 MSRP to get an entire structure deck. And most people for structure decks, especially like this, they're just going to drop $30 and they're going to get all the cards that they need. So with this type of product, especially like the Shadal Structure Deck, Mechanized Madness, you look at the cards that are also being reprinted in there that have a history of being high dollar cards. Um, like for example, you have Black Luster Soldier that I believe came out of Shadal's. You have Super Polymerization that came out of Shadal's. Those are cards that you know are gonna have value out of the gate. There isn't really a ton of cards like that right now, but I would say the cards that are probably gonna have the most value and probably give you the bang for your buck are the new support that's coming out for Sacred Beast, the new cards coming out there. I would probably say that this one would be four, I would say it's high. So this one's gonna be an easy one, collector value, fan favorite anime support. Now this is Judai or Jaden, depending if you watch the English or Japanese, going against all three Sacred Beasts. Yu-Gi-Oh! GX is one of the top animes out of the Yu-Gi-Oh! series for sure. 
So I would say this is definitely an easy five. Again, this was rated only 1% away from being the number one structure deck out of the poll that happened from Konami. So next, reprint values and rarity bumps. Now, as I mentioned, there aren't a ton of really great reprints coming out here. I would say probably some of the best reprints is Pot of Desires for sure, and Radiant the Multidimensional Kaiju but that's kind of it. And I would say Pot of Desires may end up coming to be like one to two, maybe even $3 in the structure deck. And Radeon, the multi-dimensional Kaiju, I think it's rare is sitting at about $8 right now. So the common may end up being one to $2 for sure. So you're already getting about $5 out of the structure deck, but these are really the only great reprints that I would say are coming out. And I would say we've seen better, especially with, with some of the past structure decks. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this one as a solid three as medium. Influencer hype. I would say that this is very similar to what a lot of people are saying. You have channels like Cyber Knight, which I feel tailors to a lot more casual players. And he has shown to be extremely excited for the structure deck. He's opening it on his channel and he keeps stating how excited he is as he does for most of his product openings. And then you have folks like John from House of Champs. Like you can see, see in his title, he says, heavily disappoint me. Although there's a lot of people that are still saying they're excited about it regardless. And then you have things like Mega Capital G saying justice has been served with the Sacred Beast getting their own structure deck. And then Cole 40 talking about how the new support and makes them much easier to summon. I would say it's really mixed. I think the sentiment is very similar to a lot of the players right now that wish it was maybe more meta, but also understanding like, what do you expect? It's an anime archetype that's getting support more just to make it playable. So I would say, over Overall, it's high. I wouldn't say it's very high, but definitely high. Now, lastly, future meta relevance potential. I, I think this is hard to say because who knows if we might get more support? Who knows if there's going to be an engine that somebody's gonna be able to put in here to actually make this deck become a tier three, maybe even a tier two. It's definitely at the casual to rogue tier. It has a lot of potential for OTK. It lets you swarm out big attack monsters. When it comes to things like effect negation and recycling, which is now just very important in the meta, it's just not really there. But I would say it's a three. I, I would say there's medium potential for this to become meta relevant in the future, depending if the right type of cards come out or the right type of engines can couple with the Sacred Beast. So guys, that is all of our scores. And when you tally them together with our weighted percentages, the Sacred Beast structure deck has come out to a 76%. Now this isn't our highest score, but it isn't our lowest score. And I feel with a lot of hype that's coming for Sacred Beast, I think this is a safe investment. I feel the safest way to make a return on investing into the structure deck is not opening the product and actually selling the structure deck whole. Now, if you go and you buy it at wholesale, you could probably get it for about five to $6 a box. It might be something actually to hold on to for about maybe a year. And you'd probably see these structure deck maybe get to 15 to $20. But I do feel that these will sell like hotcakes as a structure deck. And then you may have some people that just want to go and invest into the higher dollar cards into the set. But at that point, if they go and do that, they'll probably determine why am I doing this? I might as well just go buy the full structure deck. So I feel the safest way to make a return on this investment again is selling the structured X whole. So guys, that's gonna do it for this risk analysis. I would love to know what you think. Do you guys agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Let me know down in the comments below. I really wanna hear your thoughts. I know you guys are very excited about me doing a risk analysis on the upcoming 2020 Megatons, and that is something I am definitely intending on making a video on. I wanted to make sure I got this one out first because this product is dropping just in early July. And when it comes to pre-ordering, you have to pre-order as soon as possible. So I wanted to make sure I got you guys this content sooner rather than later before it became too late. But the next things on my list are definitely Battles of Legend, Armageddon, and the 2020 Megatons. Now guys, if you wanna keep up with things I'm working on, I'm planning on investing more time and in posting on Instagram and Facebook. And again, if you guys wanna have discussions with other folks like you and talk about upcoming Yu-Gi-Oh! product and investments in Yu-Gi-Oh!, go ahead and join my Facebook group. Again, all that stuff is down in the description below. So guys, stay safe out there. We'll see you next time. I hope you have a good one. See ya.